Hello everyone, E here. Welcome to another video. It has been two weeks, so it's time to give you some status of what's been going on. This time around I have something a little bit different. In the past I've always tried to really show you a finished product or a finished section or a finished element when I'm working on it. Don't really show what I'm struggling with or sharing what mock-ups I go through uh, before I actually decide on settling on something. This time around, we're going to dive into that. So let's get to it. Before I actually dive into the back section of the Great Hall, which is what I've been tackling, I did spend some time with the finishing touches of the wall over here, the back wall as I like to call it because it's not the one on the front side um, and I have finished half of it pretty much or almost exactly half maybe a little bit more just to show you the difference so this is what we had last time basically the first layer of texture being built and on top I built this which is well at least currently using well, three or four different elements, or actually three if you exclude these one by one tiles that I usually place initially when I place the first layer. And those are namely one by one plates in tan, one by one plates in dark tan, and these one by one tiles, I believe they're tiles in pyramid shapes. And when you look from afar, it really gives you the feeling of this kind of wall texture and even from the when you zoom in and look close it still looks okay and although this venture is obviously very um, intensive on parts and expensive you know more than average it's still kind of uh, a how should I put it maybe a good way to do it without really going insane breaking your wallet I am showing this uh, for two reasons, mainly just to show the reflection of what it looks like or it would look like without basically this further detail. If you just leave it like this, some would say that actually it looks fine this way, but this way it actually looks a lot better. Um, and the second reason is people ask me how do you place the pieces, do you just place them randomly, do you have any pattern or anything? Yes and no to both. Uh, Long story short, basically what I'm trying to do is, well, yes, I am placing them randomly. <laughs> I don't say that over here on these precise, precise squares, there's going to be a plate, etc., or, or a tile or this and that. I have two or three kind of um, major rules when I do this. Maybe we can call it the little algorithms that I, or little rules they never break. And if we dive in and zoom a little bit more, you would notice rule one, I never place two plates next to one another and by next to one another I mean on the same level so this one here it will never have a body right next to it so if it's in the middle to the left and right there will never be another plate doesn't matter if it's in this color in tan or in dark tan it's okay to have it diagonally but never next to one another and also almost never and by almost never I mean maybe once in a hundred occurrences um, never right underneath it could be over here so one level then it could be opposite but right underneath or right above never same thing with the pyramids it's okay to have them next to one another in diagonal but never one next to each other and never one underneath the other and with the dark tan, currently I'm just trying to kind of have just a little bit of it. Part of me is still exploring the variation of adding pyramid shapes in dark tan, which I don't really have that many right now. It's pretty expensive. But I'm probably going to get my hands on a couple of thousand of these at some point. And maybe I will add them here. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Uh, right now I'm worrying that maybe if I add another piece it will kind of be too too much crowded. Right now, 
wherever I'm leaving basically the first layer, this to show places like here and here, it gives kind of the impression of, well, just it lets it breathe a little bit more. Otherwise I feel like it will be a bit more too clustered. And uh, yeah, basically that's it. It's pretty simple, really. Just never have to place one next to another. Same with the pyramids and have the dark tans spread out somewhat. And also maybe when you look at a column, for example, a pillar, you don't want the dark tans to be kind of in one line. Sometimes I do that like accidentally here and there, but I always try to have them a little bit spread out. I don't limit myself, for example, three dark tans here or an N number of pyramids or whatever. It just the way it just feels natural to me as I'm building it. Every so often I do something, then I look at it from a different angle, decide maybe I should change a little bit, but it's usually just small changes. And that's pretty much it. Not much to it, really. It's just as long as it looks pleasing to me, it usually it's fine. Anyway, let's move to the backside. I have plenty to uh, talk about that there. Okay, so as you might have noticed, in order to work on this, I have removed the uh, rock, which is one piece over there. And that in over there is these two layers that are basically one whole thing that uh, obviously is split in two, just to remove. And this is hidden, so this texture here does not need to change. It can be like this, just so I can work on this properly. So where should I start? Perhaps I mentioned already that last time I decided I'm going to change completely what has been going on here. The previous design was using hinges on three sides over here and over here and a split right down the middle and both would open like a wardrobe to the left and right. That was a good idea. was actually really in love with it initially. It was very classy in a way, but it wasn't very great because it would only open up to here, only this 90 degrees swing. It would make reaching in very difficult because you can't do this motion. The door here would be in a way. So you have to do this, which is was annoying, very restrictive. And with this new texture, even over here where the second layer is not added, it would mean that the hinges would hit here and it was even more difficult. So no point doing that. So I decided to use clips instead. We're going to have two here and maybe here. This one is not added yet because I'm not certain where the clip should be here. So if that's going to be, we don't need two halves. We can only have one really kind of layer here. It's going to slot in and be removable if you want to access the side. So with doing that, it actually solved some problems because before it was an issue to have the windows down like split because there are three rows of windows, but I'm going to get into that later. It's going to be split and obviously the half needs to the left and the right. They need to be individual and it was a difficult decision how to do it in the new way because now the windows are obviously you know, like this. And the windows in the back need to follow the same kind of style, including the, obviously the pattern here with the um, frame and so on. So over here is what I have so far and maybe I can place it with one hand. Yeah. Okay. So I actually done a little bit here, but it's just no point doing it. Really, uh, I've taken it apart just so I can really show you and explain. So let's start from, well, the beginning. Over here at first, before, if you remember the last video, so you can check them if you feel like it, we had something different. I had used all of these arches here, like, like so, if you remember, and just to support over here. But that was actually not very honest to the original design. Right underneath this, they should be this kind of inverted staircase, which I have 
obviously placed and it will correspond with everything that is placed here as texture and over here whatever is like left I will hide it with the rock cover by raising it a few plates here and there and maybe even lower it whatever is needed but important thing is that this pattern was added now it's as it should be and that was the first thing pretty easy thing to solve then the thing that I was really thinking about is how to do the windows as I mentioned already the windows need to be this style that I have settled on for the other windows which means I want to have the same framework and the same idea here if you notice in all the photos or shots from the films you have three rows of windows here and they each have similar to over here three rows of actual windows separated by frame except instead of here where we have one section second section third section over here you actually have five sections i believe which is four rows of four which are all same and then another row of more bigger one than the ones that are identical with something like little arches in the end so that was one thing so in order to actually support this whole frame as you can see to support three rows then you need four rows of frame in reddish brown so the minimal way to do this is four studs indicated over here by the dark tan so this is where the window should be and then at least at least one stud that needs to be between them which already was a problem because initially this section here was not this wide maybe even right now it's a little bit too wide i would have preferred over here to be maybe two studs longer or wider whatever you want to call it same with here but I would make this section here way too small to support the windows that I'm accustomed to. So that was the first thing. So after I widen it, I even tried it even wider, shorter, um, not so deep. Right now over here, we have a six stud sticking out, trying to have it a li little bit less, but having the same problem here because except other than these three windows here window columns you have another one here and another one here obviously at 90 degrees compared to what else going on here and we need the space here the same space to support it we need something to place in between and there has to be some space here between the window and this wall so this is really the optimal kind of way to support this not supporting it would have meant doing it the, the windows differently and the windows shouldn't be different so at least for the time being I have decided to settle on this second problem the framework as you know the framework here works pretty well with these columns because you can hide whatever you need to hide behind and these columns are also very sturdy and you can use them as kind of slots to slot in the whole framework but the biggest problem was that over here we don't have the three e even the two stud uh, space it's only one stud wide which would mean the same thing would not really work so I had to really figure out a way of making over here something that would support the framework of the windows because as you know this framework is supported by a clip that clips into the column which is serves as a base to attach a window and half of its frame and the other half always comes 
from the window that's next to it. Except for the ones at the end where the frame is on its own without anything else and it's inserted into the next column or into the wall of the building. And that worked all fine and dandy, but over here that just doesn't work because you can't, you don't have the space to hide anything. So it was a really big concern what to do. So I ended up figuring out this over here. This is really accomplished by using the same framework as before, except it uses the same piece but inverted. What do I mean by that? The framework, as you might notice, is done with these brackets, mainly these here, going from top to bottom, right? So I combine these with their twin, which is bottom to top. Very similar, but ultimately different. So when you do this and you place a brick like this, and then close it with its twin, you get this. And this is basically what I've done here. It's over, you have these brackets over here that I've covered with tiles, or if you don't want to cover them with tiles, you can place the window. And it actually, it's mathematically correct. It fits the math with this space. Then once I settled on this variant, then I asked myself, how am I going to place this? Is there a way to place this here? To attach it. Obviously uh, this side here doesn't, even if there is a stud there, you can't really place it here. It just won't work. It will either stick out here and it's very fragile as well. So I used the same piece I used for the front gates of the Great Hall, except in pan, of course. This thing, this brick one by whatever. And this is very actually nice because it sticks into the back side of this construction, this thing over here. As you may see, one side has studs and the other one has these holes. So this actually fits right in here and it's very sturdy, this whole construction. So I raised this stud over here from behind and this actually slots into here and we'll, I will close it on the top, which will be attached and as long as it's actually positioned here, it will not go anywhere. So that was really nice to be able to do that. I'm going to need more of these bricks here. Whoops, sorry. And that's going to be the same for over here. So what we have is these two pillars that are separating the three rows of windows and that's all fine and dandy and at that point I thought okay well this is actually really really working except it was not working because <laughs> the next problem was how am I going to place a window here and then have enough space to create this or something like this and place the border of the next framework on 90 degrees angle over here while at the same time not screwing up with the math. And I spent quite a lot of time doing that, thinking about it, placing this one in the back, one forwards, trying to figure out what exactly to do and seemed very very like a, there was no way to do it and i'm actually still not completely sure i have it figured out and that's pretty much why i am sharing you my thought process throughout this whole thing instead of just showing what i've done because i haven't been able to figure it out within this two-week period but i believe 
I have almost figured it out. So I think I should turn this around a little bit and then explain it a little bit better. So I have turned it completely around. So you see basically the back side here and this is where the um, scoring thing and the mechanism is for keeping points for the uh, four houses. But basically, yeah, this is the inside just to show you what's going on. So again, replacing this over here like so and then we have what else going on here and i was initially thinking of the pillar that is over here in the corner and the pillar over here in the corner to be different than this because obviously it needs to do different roles compared to this pillar this pillar here only needs to work left and right and whatever is here needs to work kind of you no know, if you imagine east and west it needs communicating to east and south over here so it obviously had to be different but but actually it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be different the same thing actually does the job and this is what I came up with it's, it's just very elegant beautiful way it is essentially the same framework it is this this design here that I showed you except it does have one little addition that I will try to show you as best as I can Maybe if I place it here. Right. So here you see basically this, right? The one brick and the brother and sister piece forming a little bubble around it. But actually over here, right over, over here, there is another one. And if you actually place that there, the other bracket from down to upwards, it gives you the same actual element that you need to place another window and it gives the framework of the window and does basically the same thing. So if you place this over here, it fits perfectly obviously i'm going to drop it now if i let it go but trust me it it's it just works and the window is actually in the dead middle of the two by four dark pan so if you add the other um, framework over here it actually is exactly correct so at that point you got all that i was really happy but there was again always when you think you're done you're not done because as i mentioned there is no framework over here it needs to be alone there is no other window that can support and allow the framework to be attached to it it has to be like here like this, the last window that doesn't have a body, so the framework is on its own. Except over here, you have different, different kind of atmosphere. You can't really use the trick of hiding it within the wall because over here we have a three by three that we can actually break the inside of like a piece of it and the whole row to be empty, so you can hide the framework. Over here, just. There is no space. And here is that framework right now. There it is. So I had to figure out a way to attach it somehow. It wouldn't really work here. So the only thing that I figured out is by using a one by one brick with a hole and this pillar here and this places the stud kind of in between and then basically this here 
slides into this stud over here. And that actually works. And it works with the math. I can't do it with one hand, I'm sorry. I'm trying to show you. But this here, <laughs> this looks, I mean, it's probably a forbidden technique that I care that I care about those. Um, it will be hidden. I can hide this. You won't be able to see it. But I don't think that this is the way I want to do this. I'm exploring different ways to securely attach the last framework that is on its own on this side. And obviously, it will have to be done the same on this side, just mirrored. And that's it. Um, obviously, this can be used. And I have it in my pocket as something that I will do, probably, if I don't figure out anything else. But I believe that there should be a better way. Um, a friend of mine has suggested that I should break this off here and use something like this, or maybe something like this, and then have another column here to attach it. But I, that's just not going to work, probably. It just mathematically, it's just, it won't work because this is not dead center of the studs here of this this wall even this is kind of in the middle it just doesn't doesn't work that way so yeah maybe if some of you geniuses in the comment section can say something about this it's actually be very helpful but it's a very peculiar way to actually approach this and I'm trying to explain as best as I can probably not the best way possible but if anybody has any ideas uh, I'm all ears but basically that's why I haven't really been able to uh, finish this off that and I was waiting on some pieces I can probably build this window here and whatever but I would rather not really continue and until I'm, I've figured out exactly how to place the framework. I can place the windows, the last thing. But that is pretty much my thought process for the past two weeks. Whenever I sat down and thought about this and basically gave you the various challenges that I encountered in a linear pattern and way and how my thought process was really going. So. I do believe that actually I accomplished quite a lot, even though the end result is not really present. I believe that figuring out how to do, especially this this section here, I'm very happy with this. Because with this framework, when it's here, uh, let's see if I can place it here without falling apart. Yeah, there we go, maybe. This will actually support this pattern, this here and this over here. And yeah, it's actually very sturdy. And once it's locked on the top, um, I have actually tried and experimented with this pillar here being in space and the back with the window attached in the kind of weird way that I've shown already. And this thing slots in perfectly. It does not fall. It doesn't move even. So job well done. Very satisfying. But here, yeah, this thing, this is what is really bothering me. And before you ask, why don't you use the same thing that you did here? Because over, over here, where is that thing? There we go. Over here, it's not the same way as here in the middle pillars we have this with these studs sticking towards the camera and actually these slots where you can slot something in the back so it's like this except over here it's like this so we have the studs facing inward and that can't really be avoided because otherwise you can't slot it over here because if the studs are here, they're hitting here. And even if you make enough space, it will kind of fit and you will see the distance between 
the wall. It just doesn't work for this to be like this with the other way around. And this can be hidden over here with these when you place it like this. The other way around doesn't work. Which means you're facing with studs inward and hence the solution for the time being. So yeah, that's it. Kind of a lot of hours actually were spent on the, this, these two weeks with with this um, not much to show for it but I hope you understand and that's pretty much it for me uh, I will continue to work on this hopefully next time you will be able to see why not the finished thing yeah I think it's possible it's very possible maybe even with the texture here or at least roughly done We'll see and I'm hoping to have finished the site too I think I need more pyramids because because I'm yeah out of those but yeah other than that the channel is approaching 500 subscribers which is I guess something of a milestone I guess I should do some kind of a Q&A but still a little bit early need a bit maybe 20 30 more subscribers but might do a separate video for just for a Q&A or something. I don't know. I see people do things like that. Although I'm not really sure that there are all that many curious people regarding this. But hey, who knows? Anyway, I hope that my rambling hasn't bored you to death up till now. And that you have enjoyed, well, or at least gathered some of an idea of what I've been doing and how I actually build this a very complex project so until the next two weeks i will uh, work on this and i will see you then thanks for watching stay healthy and yeah as always happy building <laughs>